as we're sitting here wondering what the Cowboys are going to do after they got beat, let me just give you this theory as well that I don't think a lot of people are talking about because it was a seven seed that came in first ever seven seed. You know, the playoffs used to have eight teams in it a long time ago. Not even a seven seed won then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dead. So wow. this is the first seven seed to win, you know, in the new construct. And so everyone's like, oh, gosh, seven seed. That's embarrassing. How about the idea that the Packers are a really good football team coached by a really good football coach and quarterbacked by a kid who's been waiting and is ready to pounce and has been pouncing since week 11. Week 11. Since that time, Jordan Love has 19 touchdowns and one interception. Ballin'. How about that? (laughs) How about the fact that he's going to be a tough out for anyone, potentially even the one seed. You know the Niners are feeling really good about themselves as well. And you know they are a terrific team, arguably even more better rostered and talented than the Dallas Cowboys. But how about the most dangerous team in a tournament frequently is the youngest one that doesn't know what they should know? and knows just enough to come into your house and completely wreck the buffet. How about that? How about this may be their time to start shining, and the Dallas Cowboys weren't ready for it? And how about this might be the better way to build a team and win with them in the Super Bowl era that we currently reside in? I'm saying that you might have your quarterback making $40 million and your top wide receiver being the offensive player of the year, and you got a really special kid down in the defensive line and a terrific offensive line. But put it all together, maybe you're not the best team. Maybe the Packers are the better team. And that's the tough part about figuring it out because if the Packers are the better team, then maybe it's not just the coach who needs to be changed in Dallas. And that is something that I don't believe, as you know, the Jones family is ready to tackle that as well. Do you have organizational meetings in Dallas on this subject matter? Because the way you've constructed the team and the way that they played, now it comes to win or go home time. Is the quarterback the right guy? Is the coach the right guy? Is the coordinator the right guy? Because he sure looked that way in the first 17 games of the season. In game 18, they got defrocked. And maybe the Packers are going to be the tough out in the NFC. Because Dallas is out, and they're moving on, and they are feeling really good about themselves. And they have maybe... Maybe, and I, I understand what I'm saying here. And we're seeing Hurts tonight. And we're seeing Baker tonight. And we haven't seen Brock Purdy yet. And we saw Goff make some really good throws last night in a, against a, in a, in a, in a, a physical paint swap and affair. But is it possible Jordan Love winds up being the best playoff quarterback in the NFC? Because he's one game in. And that was unbelievable. Matt LaFleur has got to be, he didn't have the words for it, actually, after the game. This is a great soundbite right here from Matt LaFleur. Hit it. Uh, Jordan Love, wow. That was, that's about all I can say, Pete, is wow. Um, What he did and the poise he shows, the command he shows, the, the, the touchdown pass to Dontavian Wicks, uh, it was an all-out look. We were obviously in the empty set. He had, uh, I think it was Tucker, Max Protect, and that was a great job by Tuck uh, and the rest of our offensive line. And for him to hang in there and get that throw, and Wicks made a hell of a catch. But those are, those are things that uh, you, you just can't 
necessarily you can try to coach it, but what a moment for him. Um, to me, that was a big time play. It just shows the growth that he's had uh, from his first start versus KC to now. Um, just so proud and happy for him. Um, he is, he, he is, he's a dude. He is a real dude. He is a dude. <laughs> a real he dude. is a real dude. That's a good he is a, a real, real dude. dude. <laughs> and last thing, and then we'll take a break, and Chris Long will join us. I have an apology to, to, to say into this microphone, a mea culpa, to Brian Gutekunst, the general manager of the Green Bay Packers. I have spent about three years wondering what he's thinking and how he goes about his business and what is he doing. And today, he has got to be just, I mean, cloud nine. He might be on cloud 10. Well, I'm on cloud 10 with Michigan still, but cloud nine. He has got to be sitting there. He wants to spike the football, I'm sure, but that's just uh, clearly not his style. But Jordan Love absolutely turns out to be the right move. Absolutely. And then... The three touchdown passes, Romeo Dobbs, six catches, 151 yards, and a touchdown. Fourth round out of Nevada. Dontavius Wicks, he became the first rookie wide receiver because he was chosen in the fifth round. We're all talking about Puka Nakua in the fifth round. Wicks became the first Packers rookie wide receiver to catch a touchdown pass in the playoffs since Devontae Adams. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, and Luke Musgrave, who they got in the second round of this year's draft out of Oregon State, he caught a touchdown. And I'm not even mention Christian Watson, second rounder of 22. Jaden Reed, second rounder of 23. Tucker Craft, third rounder of 23. Aaron Jones figured out a way to keep him around. No Rich Eisen show. Curse there. Curse there. Just the bump. He was our last guest on last week's show to end it on Friday. 21 for a buck 18 on the ground, three touchdowns. <laughs> Sir, I say to you, Brian Gutekunst, I am sorry, and I salute you. Wow. Green Bay Packer fans, congrats. You just won and done the Dallas Cowboys, which I think, you know, is, I mean, I've, if you can one and done the Bears, I guess that's one, but that's pretty damn close for you.